Hello and welcome to the Trail of You Boys. Uh, today we've got a bit of a special one for you guys. Today we're going to be talking about Terminator Dark Fight. We're also going to be talking about the original Terminator, Terminator 2, Judgment Day, Genesis, and yeah, just well, just any everything under the uh, the franchise, basically film wise, and um, yeah, the highs and lows of the franchise for sure, for sure. Um, so we've been and watched Dark Fight yesterday, didn't we? And yeah, and I'm going to steal. I'm going to steal a phrase from a, a famous comedian, Michael McIntyre. Um, it's a very whelming film. Okay. Because you never hear anyone say, I was very whelmed. You either hear underwhelmed, which is like, it's not worth giving to watch. Yeah. Or overwhelmed, which is like, dude, it was so amazing, you've got to watch it. Yeah, yeah. And I feel this film is neither. I feel this film is, it's, it's whelming. Someone said to me they were going to watch it, but oh yeah, man, he'll enjoy it. And someone said to me, oh, I don't really feel like watching it, I wouldn't feel the need to convince him. So I'd say it's a very whelming film. Um, we'll talk about the trailer dead quick because obviously trailer view boys. But, yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll talk about the trailer. Like I said, we'll, we'll let you know before yeah. we're about to give yeah, you a major drop spoilers. Any bonds. Now, quick sort of loophole, get out of jail free card. If you have not seen any of these Terminator films, this might not be the podcast for you, man. <laughs> like, check out some of our other stuff. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. But we are going to go through the whole chronic of um, shit show that is this franchise and it's, like I say, ups and downs. So... What are we going to do for you now? We'll play a trailer. Yep. And then uh, we'll uh, we'll go from there, guys. So here is trailer to Terminator Dark Fate. Talk. Talk fast. You first. My name is Sarah Connor. August 29, 1997. It was supposed to be Judgment Day. But I changed the future. Saved three billion lives. Enough of a resume for you? No. You may have changed the future. You didn't change our fate. I know you're scared, but I'm here to protect you. I've never seen one like you before. Almost human. I am human. Just enhanced. Why do you care what happens to her? Because I was her. Sarah! I can see you're very upset. I'm going to help you protect the girl. Nobody else is gonna die because of me! If you don't make it, everybody dies! Expect a big pain, brother. My whole body's a weapon. When this is all over, I am going to kill you. I understand. I'll be back. Right. Um, pretty, uh, it's an okay trailer, really, wasn't it? I don't think we need to critique it like we do the others, but... Um... Um, no, no, definitely. I mean, it, to give it a critique, in, I can already say straight off the bat, it's it's a free star because some of the ones it'll just give away and whatnot. But um, the trailer's really good. Um, Linda Hamilton coming back. Which I heard a bit of story and I was like, nah, I don't see him doing that. But then to see her actually in the trailer, obviously confirming it was like, yo. <laughs> like, yeah. And she's kicking ass, man, like in the trailer too. Yeah. Um, it definitely leaves a lot of questions. I mean, I, the trailer, it definitely, it went in my perspective, it definitely led me in a direction that the film did not go down. 
Yeah, definitely. So it didn't give too much away, but I, I don't think they needed to put Linda Hamilton, who plays Sarah Connor, or yep. Arnold Schwarzenegger, who plays the T-800. No, they I agree. They didn't need to. No, I agree. They, Maybe uh... they thought that the franchise was that down and they needed those characters oh, in just, just to draw people in. I, I See, now I agree with that. I think... Um, I just, dude, I just think the, the Terminator films have been that bad over yeah. the years. Because, <clears> uh, for those of you who don't know... They literally came out and, and literally said, like, um, for this is how big the trailers were being amped up. Uh, the trailer intro, they had Lin- Linda Hamilton come out and say, this is a direct follow-on from Terminator 2, Judgment Day. So it has nothing to do with any of the releases. What was Terminator Genesis again? Is that what oh, it was? Man, I, ain't got, I ain't got time, man. I ain't got time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, when a franchise performs that bad that your audience will completely accept that the last three films you released. I think there are a lot of people out there that probably enjoyed Rise of the Machines, but yeah, um, I think because it was just a you know a, a follow on from what well, yeah. they, they thought it was a follow on, but it's a cool concept at the time. But looking back at it now, uh, it didn't really do no. en- enough for the franchise, did it? No, because if it had of, we would have had more films following on set in that same period of time, of, you know, in the dystopian future. Yeah, but. Um, but yeah, so right, we're going to get into it, guys. This is the this is the spoiler warning. We're going to get straight in on the film. alert ahead. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, just as a rundown, um, we've got Terminator, nineteen eighty four. Terminator two, Judgment Day, nineteen ninety one. Yep. T uh, three, Rise of the Machines, two thousand and three. Oh man, skip that. Skip that one. T uh, four, Salvation Army, two thousand nine. Not a bad really watch. Good. I'd recommend that. Yeah. Yeah. Christian Bale, really good. Definitely. T um, five, Genesis, two thousand fifteen. Moving Miss it. on. Skip. Uh, skip. Skip it. Skip it. Two T six, Terminator six, Dark Fate. Right. Um, again, I'll, I'll leave you what I said. Uh, it's it's a whelming film for me. It's yeah. n- it's neither. Don't watch it, or you've got to see it. It's definitely a sort of yeah, it's all right, man. Like, yeah, so it's, could, it's it's not a waste of time. It's a, it's an enjoyable watch. Yeah, you could skip you could skip three, four, and five, and just have Terminator one, two, and then watch Dark Fate. Fate. Yeah, um, just for a quick rundown, very quick rundown of the story. Um, it's all changed now. Um, it carries it directly on from Terminator two, uh, Judgment Day, which means that um, Skynet has been killed off. It's been destroyed. There is no more Skynet. However. We ended up inventing an AI that was designed to fight cyber attacks and hacking, and that 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 became self-aware and decided it didn't want to uh, didn't want to work with us anymore. Shut us down, shut us out. That was called Legion, and it goes down the same sort of route. Stop your future. They have they don't call them Terminators, but they have these uh, Rev Eights that are basically Terminators, but a bit more a bit more advanced. And yeah, it goes down that, and again. Have to send someone back in time because they've sent someone back in time to kill the future leader of the resistance. So they get wind of that. They send back their own protector. Happens to be this advanced um, augmented human. It's really great concept. And you know, as you'd expect, shit goes down. The Terminator finds the mark. The soldiers, the humans, are protected. You know, they uh, they evade it. They they come to the conclusion that they need to fight it and kill it off if they're going to survive. They do such, and yeah, it, you know, it's a it's a happy ending. It's great. L- leave it open for a possible yeah, possible, possible follow up film, but quite frankly, for me, I, I'd be happy if the, t- the franchise wouldn't touch for another ten years now. Yeah, <laughs> like just just let if it rest. They follow up from this. It has to be in the war. Yeah, it can't be another sense of my back. Well, the problem is if else. they follow this, because basically what they've done is they've re-released Terminator One, essentially. Is what they've done. Okay. In the sense of, if you follow Terminator One, on the base points of they're trying to touch on that storyline. Well, it does. It, it recaptures it all together. Yeah. Like someone sent back a, a machine sent back to kill, the, you know, the, the mother of the future leader, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you find out this isn't the mother. This is the future leader. But anyway, yeah. you know, sent back to kill the future leader. Uh, they sent back a, a human to help them, so that doesn't happen. Yeah. And at the end of the film, the future leader survives. That's yeah. exactly how this one goes. Yeah. Whereas that, that that would be the first film. So, but again, not too bad. Um, I'm going to go on my dislikes because there's many. Uh, <laughs> there is many, but uh, I'm over critical, so it is what it is. But what I will say, opening scene, Damien, you take it away because you you love that scene just as much as me. The first ten minutes of this film was fucking amazing. Oh yeah, and I know I swore, but it deserves it. Oh my god, it is just it's brutal. 
but brilliant. It is so good. You Love take the it first away, ten minutes of the film. Yeah. Oh, easily explained. So, Sarah Connor. Um, if you've watched Terminator Two, which I hope you have, if you kind of listen to this, um, <laughs> there is a scene where she's been shown footage of herself talking about the Terminator, and they use that footage again in the opening scene. Now. Yeah, Once man. that's finished, they actually see her, her and John. They're on a beach. They've sort of have avoided being killed. Terminator. They've successfully avoided Judgment Day. Yep. Directly follows on from the second one. It's literally it's it's sort of it's it's the Connors not relaxing, but sort of like accepting the fact that they, they've beat the machines. Yeah, yeah. So all yeah. of a sudden, um, John Carter spots a Terminator. That happens to be the T eight hundred. Realizes. Oh crap, they've actually sent more than one back to kill me. He then gets gunned down, shot point blank. Like, honestly, like a bitch. Like, and I'm not saying that in a bad way as you say, how dare, like, oh my god, he was so pathetic. I mean, this is a 12 year old kid and this is like a 400 pound T800. Like, honest, it is brutal. What's like, great about this scene, particularly, is that the de aging technology they've used on Linda Hamilton is just mind blowing. Oh, it's incredible, man! It's like it's 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 Mar- it's on par with Marvel stuff. It, it, it is in- honestly, so I don't know how else to say it other than it is it is as if they shot that scene. Yeah, literally when Terminator Two finished, it was yeah. incredible. So good, so good. Um, and then was you know we're, after that we're hit straight into the new character. Yep, straight in it, man. They, they don't waste no time. And there's no funeral. There's no messing yeah. about. There's no. There's not too much um, commentary. Straight into the the present day, per yep. se, with uh, Danny, who's the future leader of the resistance. Yeah, um, and then it sort of spitballs from there, doesn't it? Yeah, which and to be fair, you know what? I actually thought the pace in the film was quite good. Like, yeah, I, I, I'm not. Same. I'm not an expert by any means. But like there wasn't many moments where I was like, "This is fucking going on for a while," like, or yeah. uh, you know, "This is a bit too quick," or it's um, and and they really capture the, uh, the the chase threat, the threat of sort of like being chased, yeah, yeah, because the first one and second one do that beautifully, especially the second one, they do it beautifully with you introduced to the main threat and it is a threat, the Rev Nine, the Rev Nine, and he and he is a, a formidable force to say the least. And he is something you would genuinely you you'd fucking run like you really would, and uh, and the and the play the whole chat you know they lose it and it's still chasing them down they play it really well they do, and um, yeah it's it's just a really good film some of the points I'd say some of the highlights for me is definitely the introduction that uh, it was just so good to see that film um, it was really good the graphics spot on I, yeah, I, I must definitely. admit like it was just I had one thing. I wanted to sort of mm, critique about the, mm. uh, the graphics was the liquid metal. Yeah, it's not been topped from 1999. Yeah, 1991, think, sorry. It's I not don't been... think they uh, did too well with that, man. They could have done better. <laughs> it is bad when a film like that's what, with 2019 now, so my Judgment math is Day, terrible. With the liquid metal Terminator. Dude, it was awesome. Even was when you watch it now, awesome. graphics are really oh, good. Um, it's because they had, they because of the limited technology yeah. at the time, they had to use practical and CGI. But they did well. Which meant, like, in certain scenes, like when the t one thousand is run down the road and he's got his, like, metal hooks, hands, yeah. things, they're also practical effects. Like, the actor has got a practical set of those on running it. So, no need for CGI touch ups. It looks wicked. Yeah, no, I agree. And it wasn't convincing for me. But. Yeah, they haven't got that down since since that one. Like to be honest with any of the follow up films, which have yeah, we don't talk about the follow up films. They're terrible. Um, but no, I think this one, like I say, I'm, I'm a stick with. It's whelming. It's good enough. It's not as. It's better than I thought it was going to be going in, but it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. And that's a really good way of looking at it. But that's I, and that's that's as good as I can say about it, guys. It's not something I can rave about to you. Whereas Terminator Judgment Day, I would sit here and talk to you for hours about. There's, but, couple, of, there's a couple of things I I didn't really agree with, such as you know Carl's. Um, okay, the T eight hundred that actually kills John, John Connor. Carter. Yeah, oh, John Connor. Sorry, not John I don't Carter. know who Carter is. Man, is John Carter's a, a Disney film actually, so I'm really mixed up with that. John Connor. <laughs> Um, leader of the resistance that was um, so this T-800 completes his mission and well what does he do after that he's, he's 
Time yeah, travel. Yeah, essentially, from 1991 on... Back to the future, because yeah, he's changed yeah, yeah. the future. Yeah. Like, essentially, from 1991 to 1992, um, the, the Terminator has completed his mission, he's killed John Connor, and leaves out the rest of the days of 2019. So leaves a lot of questions like, shit, man, what's a, what's a T-800 been doing roaming around for nearly... How many years I, that like, I don't know? agree with the fact that he <laughs> pretty much takes on the American dream. Um, well, to, to again, spoiler warning, we, we did warn you. Basically, the story goes that after the T-800 killed John, and these are, these are like, this is pulling directly from the script exactly how they said it. Two months Two after months. that incident, he finds a woman that's been abused in a relationship physically and helps her and helps her raise her son. Literally two months. After killing somebody after, else's son. <laughs> after killing somebody else's kid. Like and even in this dude, even in the script man, they, like it goes so far where the T eight hundred says, you know, I, I grew a conscience over the years that I helped raise the ch-. and it's like, yeah. yeah, but how did you grow enough of a conscience over two months after killing a kid? Oh man. Like oh and it, and it was so mishandled like, and, and up until introducing him, it's perfect, Damien. Like up, up until it's like it, they just made him into a joke because his career path was um, interior decorating. The T eight hundred interior decorator, oh, the man. only, the only interior decorator for you. You might as well have made him one of these guys that's on the shopping channel selling technology. You know, you know what I mean. The T eight hundred would have loved things like the Henry Hoover. Oh, mate, this yeah. is a solid piece of equipment because I feel like the T eight hundred is the Henry Hoover of, of, of the yeah, world. If, if you don't understand that analogy, if if you've been unlucky enough to watch all the films following up, um, the the reason we say this is because whenever a more advanced Terminator is sent back in time, a T eight hundred is also sent back in time to, to face it. Fucking thing always wins, like, yeah. <laughs> or like to the point where this Rev Eight isn't even classed as a Terminator. They don't even have any knowledge about oh, the T Eight Hundred, yeah. yeah. But they've managed to make a more advanced killing machine, and still the T Eight Hundred can go toe to toe with it. This thing is so advanced it can actually split itself off into a liquid formation of itself, as well as its own in indo skeleton, yeah. and work as a pair. Like that's how efficient it is, and still the T Eight Hundred. Holds its own two on one, yeah, and it's like so. That's why we say it's the Henry Hoover because don't get me wrong, Dyson's a great man, but when them fuckers break, it's a nightmare. I, yeah. you tell me when a die when a Henry Hoover is broken because of something you haven't done to it <laughs> when it's just decided to die on its own, doesn't happen, mate. So that was one of my critiques, really, to say oh, I didn't really agree with that. Um, no, I don't although they made that. some pretty funny jokes about it. I think the problem was. When they introduced him, which they did really cool, by the way, like honest to God, his whole plot thread was wicked. Like other than, other than the fact that he, other than the fact that he adopted a family, so he grew a conscience and he, he decided he was going to help um, Sarah help, Connor, help Sarah give her a Connor. purpose, and he did that by, um, uh, you know, messaging her the locations, date and times of future, other Terminators that were being sent back to this time period, but yeah. she didn't know it was him. To her, it was just a random person yeah. sending these messages through, and she took the information and, and, and you know did what she became the, a, a, a Terminator hunter, hunter, which hunter. which again was like Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Um, and when they introduce them, you know, she obviously goes off the rails because she she automatically recognizes obviously mm. that it's the T eight hundred that killed her son because he's got, um, he develops a little scar that she gives him yeah. in the uh, intro. And she goes tits, and everyone's like, "Whoa, what are you doing? Like this guy's been helping us, and you know, and the the uh, the woman that's been sent from the future that's been augmented has has yes. his address tattooed on her on her on her address. body. It's his, it's his address. Yeah, yeah, it's his address tattooed on her body to go and find him if you need help. So she's like, "Whoa, leave it alone." And that and honest to God, that bit's great because it's like shit, man. Like yeah. I, I didn't see that coming. Like that's quality. And then from that point, the the Arnold Schwarzenegger T-800 is, is played just for jokes. It's genuinely just played just for comic jokes, relief. Man, yeah. It is honest to God. It's a shame, man. And it is because, and I feel like, Mackenzie Davis, who plays Grace, who is the augmented soldier that's sent back in time. Oh, dude, she's awesome, man. <laughs> like, come on, she kills, like, she acts yeah, the cool. shit out of that role. She just chews cool. the scenery to bits. One of the coolest, you know, talking about cool, cool, you know, doing it well coolest parts of the whole film for me was the the intro where the T-800s are walking onto the beach 
from the uh, from the yeah. What do they do? They they surface from the ocean like almost like navy seals. Yeah, and just but obviously just walking stiffly as they do with guns and just start ripping. They missed the trick there because although it was it was brilliant, they missed the trick. They could have done a bit of a you know underwater. The skull the, under the, the water, Terminator yeah. walking, and you know dust was moving from its feet underwater, and it finally rises through the yeah. ripples of the water and starts that been, shooting. That would have been really room. cool. That would have been awesome. But, but um, still yeah, and that's, and that's sort of the problem. The problem is like, you know, there's a few holes to pick in the film. Like, and I'm not an expert, so I can't, mm. you know, properly pick out the films. But it's just it goes back to the fact that Terminator Two. Is still the best Terminator film you can go and watch, and he's still my recommendation. Like you put these films in front of me, a gun to me, I've got to pick one. I can only watch that one for the rest of whenever I watch yeah. them. It's Terminator Two: Judgment Day, and it was just like it was so bad. Like some of the things, like like the military base scene. There's this scene where yeah. uh, there's this scene where they basically like I'm not going to go too much into detail, like but they basically go into a military base and they're allowed to, and they're being helped, so to speak, by um, the military. And then the Rev Nine flies into obviously a, a now fly zone, it's a military base, now flies on. And it gets threatened to be shot down and it ignores these threats. And you know as well as anyone, the American uh, America, the United States, they don't take shit, man, when it comes to they shit they will fucking shoot shit down. Like they've done it in the past. And apparently this particular military base has only got four guys with four fucking automatic rifles. Apparently no missiles, no anti aircraft fucking equipment. What and I was just watching it like Fucking really, like really, really, like it just it completely it like that. In fact, I'd probably say that thirty minutes of that that scene and what follows completely sucks you out of the whole fucking film. Like, and you start looking at it going, huh? Yeah. The fuck? Like, it's just ridiculous. And um, it's a bit there's there's being bombastic and there's taking there's there's stretching you know the truth and how things really are to make it more entertaining. But that completely just. Throw shit out, logic out the window and goes, wouldn't this be great if this happened and then this? Happened? Oh my god, what if this happened? It's like I, I do that, bro. I'm I'm just a nobody. I'm the guy who goes, yeah, and then they do, and don't think logically about how shit really works. These are paid professionals and writers and directors. Like not one of them went, yeah, that's bullshit. Mm. That, that's not how that would happen. I think it led so to it a just... really good scene though, oh whereby um, the Rev Nine is actually finally, you know kicked off the plane and he's just <laughs> flying through the air and he and all of a sudden it cuts to a scene oh, as a yeah, typical a family barbecue, in the back America garden, barbecue steak on the grill the Rev just slummits <laughs> into his shed like literally like, <laughs> like yeah. shed wood flying everywhere and everyone's he, like oh my god he gets up and walks away and says oh Sorry about your shit. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh, but see, that's that's part of the comic relief done right. Yeah, yeah. Look, like, you know what I mean. Like that was, I totally, I totally, that didn't suck funny. me out of it because I was like, yeah, that might, like, yeah, okay. Like you know what I mean. That's yeah. funny. That shit's funny. Like you can't deny that. But um, and the scene just before he gets kicked off the plane where he scans, like, and the, I've got to give the actor so much um, thing here, and it's Gabrielle Luna, Luna who plays the. Um, it's even listed as Terminator, the Rev Nine. Um, I've got to give him his juice because he, he sort of marries the liquid metal T-1000 from Terminator 2 and, and the sort of Arnold Schwarzenegger you know rigid Terminator so well but there's a bit where they're fighting and obviously as you know that if you've watched the films of Terminators they can do a detailed scan of things and they can sort of see if you're a Terminator or not and he almost looks confused because he doesn't like recognise the model and the, he's like he scans it and he's, he's like he's, there's that small small expression on his face even though they're on this big action scene, just say, the fuck is that? Like, yeah. what is that? Like, huh? I've seen that before, and then obviously gets kicked off, and then that happens, and it was, it was just, it, it's just one of them. The film is worth watching simply because it's full of loads of little beautiful gem, great movie moments. The problem missed, is, it's fucking littered with landmines of bad moments. They missed the, the trick. Um, they could have had the Rev Nine walk past, you know, either Alexa or Siri cropped up somewhere and you know he could have had like a, a quick moment where he looked at it and say what the <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah like <sighs> just yeah. <laughs> just but then again it, it, it's a really cool concept I like the idea that um, that you know like Skynet was was defeated but we still invented another AI and this AI still went so I didn't like um, I didn't like the fact that obviously um, the T-800 had accomplished its mission so it, it meant that the future changed and Skynet actually didn't happen what did happen was legion so legion I, I was like the new that. skynet i like that i wasn't keen on it i like that one thing for me that was a problem 
um, with the T-800. As much as I enjoyed the whole idea that, you know, he, he was helping out Linda Hamilton's character, uh, Sarah Connor and stuff. Uh, big shout out to Linda Hamilton as well. She rocks it in this fucking film. I mean, you, I'd, I'm not going to guess at her age, and it would be rude of me to say a lady's age, but um, she she smashes it. Definitely heavyweight actress right there. She absolutely chews it. Again, another strong cast. Like She's just brilliant. But, um, yeah, I liked the way they did the sort of, you know, the T-800's the one that's been helping her and stuff, but I don't buy the idea that uh, uh, Skynet built this machine told him you have to kill John Connor because he's the leader of the resistance. resistance. Like, which makes sense, you know, he's, he's the main target. But he'd got to have a kill list. He'd got to have other targets. He's oh, got yeah. to be, if you can't track John Connor, you can't find him. These are the there's commanders these other, to Yeah, there's these other people in his command chain that are, that yeah. are vital as well. So it'd be good if you fucked them off. Yeah, like, part of my French again. Like, it'd be good if you just got rid of those guys. But, um, but I, I, just, I just refuse to accept that he, he just sort of killed John Connor and just went well I've hurt myself a bit <laughs> like you know yeah, what I mean yeah. like, that's, that's me I'm clocking out guys thank you very much like, you know, I'm going to go live my life now the way nobody tells me what to do I'm an independent T-800 like oh, like no no just oh like god like again it's just on his role is is sort of played up for laughs and I apologise he's, he's really probably only in it for the last third of the film but he kind of steals it because it's like doesn't need to be about him, does it? He, do, he kind of, he just, it naturally steals it because he is the Terminator. There is no one else. Like his whole career has been on callbacks, you know, little quick lines in other films that he's done where it's, you know, a, a wink at the audience, like, oh, because you know, I've said that line in that film, like, that yeah. You like, yeah. And the problem is that when you put that guy in a Terminator film, when you're trying to make your own stamp on the franchise, is you've just turned it into another Arnie film. You know, I was excited. About- I was to, to you know go and watch the film and um, you know overall it was a really good film. Um, I can't believe on an opening night that in a cinema room that could probably sit fifty oh, people. Sh- it was ghostly, man. It was literally fifteen people in their max. Oh, definitely. Was... Like, I didn't. I, yeah, I didn't bother to count, but I, I, if it, if the number had been higher than fifteen, I would have been genuinely shocked. I question whether they're in the right cinema room. Like. <laughs> Yeah, my my man over here started getting up his uh, he's getting up his phone to make sure we got in the right sit screen. <laughs> like like now nah, this must be like uh, something that come out about two weeks ago or some shit, yeah. man. This can't be. Uh... Oh, dude, it was bad. <laughs> it was bad. But and, and you know what? To be fair, I think the movie deserves better than that. I'll give it that much. Like I, yeah. it deserves, a, you know, at least an eighty percent bums on chairs. Yeah, yes, yeah, uh, cinema seating for that because it is yeah, a bad film. It just ain't the best film either. It's something that really bugged me after watching it was the the new leader of the resistance yeah Dan uh, or Danny um, Natalia Reyes I didn't believe in her as a character they did sort of uh, they didn't do her justice in the writing floor she was what's that term a MacGuffin she just just drove the plot I I really didn't didn't believe her as a character whereas in contrast um, we'll compare it I'm comparing it again to the first one in contrast to the first time that uh, um, Sarah, Car- Sarah Connor was as critical as as well as a, a plot driving tool. Like, yeah. shit didn't just happen around her. She was involved in that stuff that happens. Like, you know what I mean? She was, you know, she. Right. she I mean, she killed the Terminator at the end of it and everything. Like, it she seemed was... as though stuff just seemed to be happening around. Danny. That's what I mean. Yeah, it weren't really. Yeah, so I didn't really believe in her no. as a character. I don't know whether they miscast it or they just didn't write her character. You know what? I want to. I want to give. I wanna, to be honest with you, I want to because the first time I've seen this um, Natalia Reyes in yeah. in a in a film role. Like honestly, I, I, if she's been in other films, I've not noticed. So it's the first time I've seen her in in an end of, like as a, as a lead role. I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt, and I'm genuinely say that it's um, it is just. I just think the the writers. And the director just didn't didn't give her justice, man. Didn't did not do her character justice. Yeah, I agree. But I, 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 that's how I feel. It's just like, look, she was along for the ride. Like, yeah, that's, you know what I mean. Yeah, didn't really. But the only thing that was. Oh, good and about... also, if you've ever wondered, sorry to, to oh, cut I you off. Um, yeah, defo, because this has just come to light, man. If you ever wondered what a T eight hundred uh, Tinder profile would ever sound like. Or read You'll like, get it in this film. You, you get that in this film. Oh, don't know if that was moment. a question. I don't know if that was a question anyone ever wanted to know, but apparently the film decided it wanted to fucking answer. That was it, a funny so. moment, yeah, for sure. Oh, but no, going man. back to um, yeah, going back to, to Danny. Danny. Uh, the only 
Leader of why the I Resistance. sort of agreed with the, her character's storyline in this movie was that right at the end, Sarah Connor takes her under the wing. Yeah, that was a cool moment. Do you know what I mean? But it, it would have been more deserved if they'd have written better. Like, but yeah. it was a good moment, don't get me wrong, and it was kind of cool. I'm almost like... Almost like it was you had a son ripped away from you, but now you, here's a daughter. Like you know what I mean. Like almost if to say like your life still has purpose because you yeah. still have something you know that, that's crucial for you to yeah. do. I tell you, but, um, I don't know, man. Mackenzie Davies, who played Grace, the um, hybrid human, the augmented uh, surgically that augmented was a human, really good, oh, really dude, good she's role. Cool man. She, cool honestly, character. All yeah. In all. I'm a massive fan of the actress anyway, like to be fair, but she uh, she even said around words that she she was like I, f- I think it was 92 days or something like that shooting. She's like apparently she was still on like 92 day 92. Going, I don't know if I can do this, man. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, because dude, you're acting with dude, you're acting with Arnie, who's like the quintessential 80s and 90s. Act- he is the action hero of, of yeah. our childhood. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you got Linda Hamilton, who again basically made this franchise. Yeah. With Arnold. And you're there and having to basically sort of be the Carl Reese of this this movie. It's like she plays re- such a good oh, character. Dude. Yeah, and the um, oh man, the augmented it was sick. The, the whole idea of that, like, dude. Yeah, like it, I'll, see, that was well thought out because they could have just gone, they could have gone a bit fucking stupid with it. Part of my French again. They could have gone really stupid with it and just um, just had to be overpowered as as hell. Yeah, they could have just had a like, yeah, well, she's augmented, so she can do these things. Don't worry about it. But they really go down the route of, of like the like me being a massive geek. They really go down the route of sort of like she can do these things, but it comes at a cost of like you know the energy she needs to do, and that's the glucose, the sugar. Like eats she, away she metabolism. yeah, she literally like eats away all the precious sort of chemicals your body needs to fuel yeah the speed, the the power, the strength. Uh, to the point where she has to make a concoction of these chemicals like that you'd get from your pharmacies and stuff and inject them in her if she pushes it too much. And it's cool because she, she gives a perfectly, you know, fine explanation for that whereby, you know, in the future, if you're going to kill a Terminator, you need to kill it within well, the, the first, first few minutes. Two minutes, like you, otherwise... You, that's all you've got, yeah. really. Otherwise, you're dead. Yeah. So they they designed these augmented superhumans to... to basically, it's, it's basically to give you that burst. It's, it's yeah. to give you that um, either advantage or equal footing in the first three minutes because if, you have, if you've if you not done it in the first three minutes, you're not going to do it, so you'll die anyway. So you'll be killed. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man. And, oh, fuck. Pardon my French. Sorry. But for goodness sake. The, the Rev 8, Rev 9, whatever it is, man. I don't know how to say it without sounding like an absolute douche. Uh, the one that sent back um, was a defective model. It was it was broke. I know that because they did a flashback where they had about six of these things um, absolutely tearing up humans like they like they were fucking made of paper towels. Like honest to god, they did this thing where like they'd split. So you got the endoskeleton just mashing people up, and then you got the the liquid metal part like literally spawning tentacles out of its back and using them like stabbing things and just like jumping through the air like stabbing five guys and then landing and just like throwing them around and stuff and the one in the future literally just like you know yeah um, yeah what, what you saying you know what I'm saying? how you doing man like you know what I mean I'm just gonna I'm just gonna menacingly walk to you like you know what I mean I mean you, you could run I'd have to chase you or I could run and you wouldn't have a chance to run but I'm just gonna menacingly walk for the uh, you know for the occasion and it's just like come on dude there's one bit where he literally chokes her just think about this right this terminator can stop a car and lift a, a beam of iron with one hand okay like this thing could probably carry 50 tons that's how it's made out to look and still takes the time to choke somebody rather than snap their neck please explain please please just Explain, because why would you do that as a <laughs> machine that's designed to kill? And where were the tentacles? The one, the one that was sent to present our present time. You, why did that not spawn you, tentacles? You kind of saw them, but it was only in um, in the form of like blades. What? Yeah, yeah. Like it just, I just, oh, it just, it just really sort of. So my only explanation can be it was a defective model or some something got messed up when it was sent through the past. So. What's interesting, actually, um, I'd hope to have seen some of the, um, a lot of the, the cast from uh, Judgment Day. Yeah. And um, I can't. I'm trying to find his name here, but the the therapist, the main therapist for Sarah Connor when yeah. she was in in the Nuthouse. Yeah. Um, it would have been cool to tie him into it somehow. 
Even as nah, like a passing character. Nah, man. Oh. I'm good. I'm good. Really? Yeah, man. I'm so okay with not seeing me in the film. Right. Yep, definitely. Uh, it's just one of them where they uh, they tied too much in already. Oh, okay, fair you've enough. You've got Sarah Connor. You've got the fact that you know, Connor had been gunned down by that T800. You've got the T800, which ties it all in with it. It was just, it was just too much. That would have been too much. It's like there's only so much. I, I believe they call it fan service. In the, there's only so much fan service you should do. In the first ten minutes, going back to that, they absolutely <coughs> gave fan service when they gave you a quick flash of the T eight hundred Arnold, mm. the de aging for that process. Because mm. I think in the other Terminator films, when he's been sort it's been of a little weak, yeah, it has been weak, hasn't it? The de aging, yeah. um, especially um, Genesis, where he waits for his former self to arrive and mm. then. Kill, that is bad. Exactly. That is bad. So I think they did really well in this one. No, but, no, I do. I think the de aging is dude, it's unlocked. The first ten minutes of the film <clears throat> does a lot of justice for the whole film, doesn't it? Really, Think mate. The it. opening, I'd say the opening thirty minutes. Yeah, it does the a opening lot for thirty it, minutes is the reason and to then watch after this that, film. It's just little parts <laughs> that happen through. They just it. let it down, yeah. and that's that's what I mean. The film is better than I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah. But not as good as it should be because you yeah. can't help but think after that first, we'll give, we'll be nice. After the first forty-five minutes, you think you're in for a fucking good film. Yeah. yeah. Like this is, geez, they've 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 hit the track of running like you know what I mean. They're straight out of the blocks with this, and then they just they seem to trip over hurdle after hurdle after that, and it's like, ah, oh, guys, come on, like, and it's oh, I don't know, man. It's one of them. This uh, Rev Nine seems almost indestructible, and it's a little bit, I don't say annoying, but. It is because you, you think if it well. was that indestructible, how, how, how does anybody stand? Like, how have we yeah. even got a resistance? Like, you know what I mean? We have to use um, Grace's core to defeat it. Yeah. You kind of think, well, in the previous Terminators, they've actually used any sort of way in that era yeah, to, to defeat... construct what they need to do. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because everyone is uh, over than over the time travel. So in Terminator One, it's trying to be as realistic as possible. The machine press. Well, the thing was, it better than that. Because in Terminator 1, um, it puts a pipe bomb. Now, obviously, I'm not a bomb, uh, you know, a demolition expert. I can't tell you, I can't tell you the explosive yield of this pipe bomb. But it bomb. does damage. Yeah, but he puts a pipe bomb in, in like literally, like inside of the Terminator X or uh, Indo skeleton because the, the melt flesh has been all melted away. And when it blows up, it like mashes his legs up to the point, like yeah. one of his legs, so it slows him down massively to the point where he's proper limping. But it's acceptable because it's like, yeah, yeah man. And then they have to use the press to to, to finish flatten him off, it and yeah. finish him off. So it's like yeah. So and then T two durable, very hard to defeat but doable. Yeah. Then T two again, it was the same. Like you know what I mean? It was one of them. If you got a grenade, you know, an explosive ordnance, you know, something that goes bang. Yeah. Like or even molten metal stuff like that. Like you know, there is a way. And there was a way, for, you know, from materials of that area to yeah. defeat. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Like the end. preferably. In the future, when they're using you know your laser guns, pew pew pew, like you know they're they're obviously designed to kill these terminators that are very durable and hard to kill, so it works. But there are still ways in our day. Yeah. You know, a shotgun ain't going to cut it, and an assault rifle aren't going to do it. But if you've got a grenade launcher yeah. or access to some C4, you got yourself a, a, a or a rocket launcher. Yeah, you got yourself something that's Which, going to blow these terminators. Um, you know, Sarah Connor uses a rocket launcher, doesn't she? And that really yeah. doesn't seem to have any effect other than just bounces Dude, it away. Yeah, just that's what I'm saying. It's, it's just, just like not, it hey, I can't accept. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. Like it, it, it doesn't keep you in the. Uh, what do they call it now? It doesn't suspend your disbelief very well. That's what it is. But it makes you think. Part of the film is where you know they're, they're trying to get hold of an EMP because they believe that that's what's going yeah. to take down the Rev Nine. Weapons now, grade um, electromagnetic yeah, pulse. Yeah, they get it, but. Yeah. It gets shot out and it becomes a failure yeah. in the sense they can't use it anymore. So you kind of get to a point where you're thinking in your head, well, how are they, they going to kill this yeah. thing? And then, as soon as that happens, it's it's like, you know, um, Danny, the leader of resistance, just sort of steps up and goes, ah, soddy, we're going to stop running now and we're going to fight. And I'm like, with what? Because you've just lost your AMP. Nah, dude, you've it's only worse. You've got a few yeah, guns it's, on you it's and worse now you want to stand and fight. Well, it's with worse what? than that when, like, with what? it's worse than that when, when, it's just worse than that because it's like it's a weapon grade EMP and stuff like that which <sighs> it's hard to explain man because it's like you find out Danny the uh, the, the augmented human that spends that also has that as an additional power source yeah which 
kind of begs the question. If that's the power source that's running all the shit, why does she need all the, like, you know, glucose and sugar and shit, like, to run a body if it has a power... Like, why does she need to power yeah, herself yeah. if she's got a power source? Like, it's, it's a bit of an odd one. Just that's what I'm saying. So the, the, the Rev-9 seem yeah. too indestructible. No, definitely, like... I, I, and again, for me, they've not had anything as realistically intimidating as a T-800. Like, you'd see that shit coming at you and you'd crap yourself. Like, yeah. don't be wrong, not say you wouldn't do the same if a Rev-9 come at you. But a Rev-9's, like, I, I just... A Rev-9 is, like, a T-800 is, shit, I'm going to die, I need to run. A, t a Rev-9 is, fuck it, man, I can't do nothing. Like, just ta just do it, like, you know what I mean? Just make it quick, just do it, you know what I mean? Yeah, just do it quick, because... I don't do nothing to you. Like, it's, it is literally that. Yeah. It is literally like, dude, that it has a plane dropped on it. It drops out of a plane. It, like, it goes through a turbine in a fucking... In a factory. Um, yeah. In a, a dam. dam. Yeah, it goes a through dam. a turbine in that that explodes. Uh, it's it's still alive. It's like, I mean, all right, a bit damaged, but like, come on. Like, man. There's no way, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so where's the T-800 at least? Couple of rounds of a shotgun shell, yeah. man, and that'd knock it down on its ass, give you time to run. Which is, again is, it's real. It's the realism in the first two that make it so good. Even though it's a sci-fi robot from the future to come and kill you, yeah. The realism and the attention to detail is what makes them legendary films. Whereas this one feels like it. It was doing that for the first forty-five minutes, and then it just dropped off the face. It, like they just went balls to the wall. Bollocks! will just this yeah. looks really like rule of the rule of cool came into play after forty-five minutes. They went, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? And then wouldn't it be cool if we, and it just no, uh, lo it lost it yeah. from there. From yeah, there. I agree. I know. It, I know we're um, we're like saying a lot of bad stuff, but yeah. genuinely, I did enjoy the film. Yeah, I genuinely enjoyed like the film. So the first thirty minutes, say, yeah, worth a watch if you're a fan of T1 and 2 or yeah. the whole franchise we're not, we're not trying to just shit on this film here like the reason we're, we're saying these things is because we're just we're really passionate about yeah. the term right? like we this was our childhood man like dude this was like we would go to school the next day and people would like kids would like I'm talking primary school here but primary school kids would be like yo did you catch Terminator 2 last night man how sick is that like genuinely as a kid like and you'd be like yeah man quality film mate. Like, oh, I'll be back hasta la vista like that's how good this film was I can't see kids going to school and saying, like, you know, when it has its, you know, TV release, going, oh, do you watch that uh, Terminator Dark? Like, it's not going to have that punch, man. Like, and it's not as quotable either. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, Terminator 2, unfortunately, spawned on so many spoofs and so many piss take films, like, of the, you know, of the liquid metal, free, you know, freezing and stuff, and hasta la vista, baby, and I'll be back. Like, it, you know what I mean? It was so huge. That pop culture, it became pop culture. Yep. And this film, I you know, alright, maybe it would be too much to be asking for it to be that, but it was never, you know, it's just, it's not, it's not. In my opinion, if they're going to carry on the franchise, it needs to be set in the war now. We've had enough of, I've had enough of, machine sent back, saviour sent back, action happens in that period of time, and it mm. messes with timeline. Give us what we want. We want to see robots and humans having at you, laser guns, flying ships, the rest of it. A little bit of salvation really did it really well. Um, yeah. That's probably the one film after T2 I, I would probably recommend a good watch. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah that's what we want now. Yeah. Uh, me, I'm happy. Uh, here's one for you. Okay, I better do this. Like, I've got the pen and pad on the gun there, right? Okay. I'm going to paint a picture for you now. So here's a trailer. Here's a trailer idea. I hope you're, uh, hope you're listening all there, Hollywood. So you got random soldier, unarmed, for whatever reason, bit bloody, cut lip, maybe stuff like that, um, running through what looks to be like a heavily rubbled area. Don't put a landmark. Don't make it New York. Something like just put like you know it could be Iraq, Syria, something like that. You know, something that almost looks like a modern warfare film. He's just running through, and he's just running, and he's breathing heavy. Like this is just a trailer. He's just breathing. He's running. You know, slips, it falls, like he's, he's basically panicking, running for his life. And he, he gets into a nice dark area that's a bit secluded, and he's just he's just catching his breath. <sighs> like the next thing you know, an arm punches through the wall behind him that he's leaning up against, grabs him, drags him through, just oh, fade to black. And you call the film something like Dark Fate, like a bit like this, but you just or, or you just call it that, or you just call it sort of like Apocalypse, like you know what I mean. That's it. And when people start asking questions, is this a new Terminator? Films? 
just no, no, no. It's just not Terminator. It's got nothing to. It's just a, you know. But when it releases, that was a T eight hundred arm. It is a Terminator film. How awesome would that be? Like you know what I mean? No, no, just just that. Nothing else. Just that. I think unfortunately we are in an era where um, without trailers or, or advertisement, we might not get anyone to go and watch it. Admittedly, it might be a slow burner. It, so it might be one where on release date, a couple of people watch it and then it explodes on the internet. If it was released via a streaming service, also in theatres, then I think it would explode via. Okay, a here's one for you then. I don't want the franchise to be touched by movies for at least 10 to 20 years now. However, I'm very open to them doing an apocalyptic TV series. Bit like the like a Netflix or Amazon Sarah Prime. Connor Chronicles type thing they did. Uh, no, because that's set in modern times. No, I'm not saying when it's set. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. Yeah, a bit like that. Yeah, a bit like that. But it doesn't have to be focused on Johnny. It could just be focused on a cell in the resistance that's fighting for. You know what I mean? Just something. Just anywhere. Yeah. Like it could be set in South Africa or you know anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Anywhere. Like just but like a Netflix or an Amazon Prime TV series. Yeah. Like. Cool. I, I personally think. Cool. Cool. That's what I'll go. Otherwise, I don't need to be touched. Sound. So recommendations. Yeah, I would recommend going to watch it if you're a Terminator fan. All in all, doesn't matter if you like all of the films or dislike certain ones. Um, it's worth the watch. Yeah, man, I'll give you that. It's uh, if it's not your thing, don't worry about it. Yeah, just wait. Just wait. Just chill. You might want to rent it one night. Yeah, or it'll come on at Netflix or it'll come on Amazon and you'll yeah. just see it or on, on TV. Um, on the television. Obviously, sometime, yeah. But, obviously, yeah. if you are a fan, you're going to have watched it. However, you'll have watched it. Um, clearly, not by going to the cinema. But uh, no, seriously, if you're a fan, it's definitely worth. It's it's worth watch. Like I say, it's uh, it's certainly better than anything that's ever come after T two, but it's just not as good as you'd like it to be, yeah. which is still high praise in comparison to Genesis. And uh, well, we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so I'd recommend it. Um, the order I'd recommend it in would probably be. Yeah, it'd probably, it'd probably be in reverse. So it'd be Dark Fate, Terminator, and Terminator 2, Judgment Day. That'd be what I'd uh, I'd recommend that. Watch You'd it in watch that order. Watch it in the order? Yeah, like, uh, worst to best. That's how I'd do. Okay. Well, this is the beauty about these films, bro. You don't. I've never even seen Terminator. I'd watch Terminator 2 like a dozen times. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm with it, you on that. it keeps you... You yeah, don't need yeah, to have yeah. watched them. A lot of explanatory is in yeah, the films. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. That's my. That's to me, guys. Um, I'm pretty much. I'm. I'm done with that. But guys, I can't keep. I can't keep talking about this dead horse of a franchise. We're trying to. We're trying to flog into into everybody's uh, homes, man. So um, yep. Be- Terminator Dark Fate. I'd say, watch it. It's a good film. You won't be. You won't be too disappointed. Same time, if you're a bit busy, don't worry about uh, clearing your schedule. Yeah, agreed. So. Okay, guys, thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave any helpful comments. And also, we are on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all the usuals. You find us on YouTube, on Apple Podcasting, and TuneIn. We'll see you on the next one.